My name is Michelle M. Dean, and uh, I'm joined with the current champion, UFC champion, Estelle Bender. I need no introdu introduction. The <laughs> very, very Ninja infused mm -hmm. guy when it comes to repping for the culture in the UFC. Um, man, what can I say, man? It's good to have you joining me today. That's she, that's she. It's good to be here. Good to be yawning to you. So first of all, I know you, you know it's fight weekend. I can imagine all the preparations you have and all the press you've had to do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just run us through what your preparation is like usually for fights. I know it's a bit different now with COVID-19. You know, that kind of puts a different twist mm -hmm. on things. But prior to COVID, like, what was the average preparation for you going into fights? Um, for me, well, I'll say, first of all, this has been, I think, top three, one of the best camps I've ever had. Um, I'm in the best shape I've been in a long time. Um, and yeah, normally during fight week, there's a, there's a little bit more buzz. There's a little bit more buzz, uh, more fanfare, more, a little bit more media as well than usual. Um, and, and I guess dealing with fans and crowds, the open workouts, but I'm kind of liking this whole no, 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 no crowds thing. Cause it just cuts my workload down and I get to the fun part, which is the fight. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, this, this fight week. It's kind of similar to the uh, the one I had in Abu Dhabi, but this is in America, in, in Las Vegas. And it's just, yeah. Um, yeah, the UFC run a tight ship. So everything is just by the book. You, you, you be here at this time and this time and right, right, right. You're assigned to your, your your obligations and you get them done. But yeah, I mean, I'm a professional, so I get it done either way. All right, that's good. Uh, let's just quickly touch on some things from, I know loads of Ninja people know about you, and of course they they support you soon as you're in fight, but I'm sure some of the comments on your IG must have been people buzzing about the fight this weekend. But uh, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't really know too much about like how you arrived in New Zealand. Obviously, when Ninja before, you mm -hmm. grew up in Ninja for the first, like what, nine, eight years of your life before you moved to no, New Zealand. Um, yeah, 10. So, um, yeah. 10, okay, 10, pretty close. So what was that like for you as a young kid, just having to switch entirely countries at that young age, having to adjust? It was different because um, for me, first of all, I didn't even know where New Zealand was. I, I was just like, wait, is that like a new country? Because I was really naive. Um, and yeah, it was a culture shock, you know, moving from Nigeria to New Zealand and yeah, having to deal with um, all these Oimbo people who don't, who know Sabi black people and they just like, they treat me differently because I, I mean, I knew, yeah. I knew I was black, but I didn't really know it was a problem till I left Nigeria for some people. So, um, yeah, I had to deal with a lot of prejudice and, and you know, a lot of negative stuff growing up in the Western world, but I overcame them. And yeah, I eventually, instead of just trying to survive, I started to thrive. Mm, nice. All right. I said, I don't want us to go too far back, you know, prior to this interview, because I know you have a lot of stuff to do. Let's touch on. Some things that stood out for me when I was going through your record, you were 75 and five kickboxing and 20 and 0 UFC. Bro, your record is insane. Like now you're about to jump into, get into this fight with Jan Blakowicz. I hope I got his surname right because it's been a nightmare trying to figure out how to pronounce yeah. it. Blakowicz, um, yep, yep. Yeah, and that's a different weight for you now. That's a new challenge you have going on. Um, so, and you could make history with this as well. You could have two titles with this. So. Apart from the fight, clearly you're looking for history to make um, with this fight. And um, what's the preparation like, knowing that you know it could absolutely be a game changer for you in your career? Um, to be honest, I kept the same energy. I kept the same energy with everything I've been doing because um, I don't feel like jumping up to this new weight class is, is anything yeah. different for me because I've been fighting bigger guys my whole life. Um, and yeah, I kept the same energy as in like, I don't prepare for the weight class. I prepare for the guy I'm fighting. I prefer, I prepare for the style that's in front of me. I get ready for that instead. And yeah, nothing really changed. We just focused and got the work done. So I look forward to getting in the cage this weekend and handling business like I do. Yeah. Do you think you're going to stay in this weight for a while? Or no, gonna... I'll go back down to middleweight. I just, I just do that one so I can do Shakara so I can flares one time. <laughs> Just to show them I can. I just want flares, you know. I you know, so got small, like then come back to exactly you know, 195, 185, and do what you do. 185. You're still sleep Paco now. <laughs> it's mad. Um, I, I'm gonna. There's a question I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna leave that for later. But let, let me just, you know, go through some things um, that um, um, I spoke to Kamaru a few weeks ago. Actually, last week, you know, off the back oh, of this God, fight, God. Um, you know, asking that. 
you know, you know, you guys clearly there's there's always love between you guys on social media. You guys support each other. Has he reached out to you this weekend? Have you guys spoken a little up to this fight? I talked to him last week, but definitely, uh, I mean, he always does before every other fight. That's one thing I actually appreciate about Kamaru. He reaches out, and so do I before each each of our, our fights. Um, and yeah, we always just chop it up and share words of encouragement. You know, like we're yeah. we're, we're Niger boys in the Western world, so we got to look out for each other, even if we're on different teams, different management, yeah. and the world might try and put us against each other. Like, nah, we got to look out for each other, have each other's backs, like unity. I mean, the country could take <laughs> the country could take note from us and how we handle ourselves and unite. So, yeah, have each other's backs. Mm, nice. And I also spoke about how you were supportive of him as well going into his fight. And he said, you look, your style is different. And I'm like, yo, everyone sees it. You know, you're proper into the technique of martial arts. And <laughs> I think that's one thing you have going for you into this fight. Now, most people are saying, you know, this guy is a good guy. And, you know, is Israel sure about this fight? You know, but you have a different coming into this because you're quick and have all the techniques and stuff. So. Do you ever worry about some of your opponents sometimes like one more? This guy can't actually shock me with these stuff if I'm not careful. Yeah, definitely. I have to be Malo number six, me. Like I have to really be on my P's and Q's, you know, because if I don't, this he can actually shock me. So, like in my last fight, same thing. He could have stopped me. Um, I'm I'm human after all. I might not look like it all the time or act like it in a cage, but I am human. I'm susceptible to damage. So yeah, um, I have to really mind my P's and Q's. And there's, and even even worse in this fight, there's less margin for error than in the last fight I had. There's zero, yeah. even negative three margin for error. Because if he touches me on the wrong button, it could be a, a quick night for me in a bad way. But that's the thing. It's it's if, a big if. Because like I said, my little number six me, I go stay ready up top. Mm. All right, huge on this weekend. Um, I know you have crazy, you still have crazy press to do. So I'm just going to touch on some fun things I know a lot of people are curious about. As far as you don't shy away from your love for Nigerian music and Nigerian culture and all these things you do. But well, what's your current feel now as far as like Nigerian music industry is concerned? Who are, you, who are the guys you're listening to right now? Who are the guys that get your ginger doing about to get into fight mood? All of that stuff. Uh, in me, uh... To be honest, right now, Rema is doing some 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 big things. You know, I've heard his new song. <laughs> yeah, Don song. Jazzy. I just on, on, after I just did I my see. press conference, I saw Don Jazzy post this meme with this girl. We we get what about to for Nyash. I just squeeze on my spirit of Jazzy on my face. I swear, man. I think made me laugh, die. But <laughs> yeah, um, who else? Uh Rema, Burner Boy is always a classic, Wiz Kid, Davido, you know the the, the the big dogs. I say I even like saw my last one. I came out to um Rogedi Baba, you know, like that's a classic. That's old school. Like I'm 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 in tune with the culture. It's embedded in me. It's embedded in my skin and my DNA. Yeah, even yeah. this guy, they fuck with Nigerian music. Hey, what's happening? <laughs> 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 yeah, I think that's as far as it goes for him. One time, and I died. Now he thinks he's my dad boy. Hold that. <laughs> you know, I, that, that's good. Um, so, yo, all the best this weekend, man. Um, before I, before I let you go, uh, I just want to touch on, you know, UFC in Africa. I know there's there's a few young guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know about it, but you know, obviously it takes a lot. To, it's not just about you know Momo, Momo, Ijaja, and how to fight, but there's a mm -hmm. lot of things they need to do, discipline and stuff. So, is there anything you're aware mm -hmm. of that UFC is doing for you know to to be big in Africa? Because people people are really paying attention, obviously, because of you guys here. Uh, well, as far as night, definitely. Yeah, uh, I mean, you look at this, the landscape of the land right now. You've got two UFC champions from Nigeria, soon to be three, which is me this mm -hmm. weekend when I become the light heavyweight champion. And then you even have, uh, I was saying, Francis Ngannou, who could be, he's from Cameroon, but, you know, he, I mean, he's a brother. So you could be, you could have four UFC champions from Nigeria this weekend, all three of us. That's a powerful image. That's a really inspiring, like, Black Panther Avengers, you know, like, moment. Like, it, it could really, it could really change the landscape of things for not just MMA in, in, in Nigeria or in Africa, but just the inspiration for our people. You know, like I've said yeah. many times, they've taken a lot of gold from us, so we got to take some gold back to the motherland. Um, and yeah, the UFC are definitely looking to do a show in, in, in Africa, the continent, the great continent of Africa at some stage. And myself as well, 
excuse me, once I'm done fighting, I definitely want to open a gym in Nigeria. I want to open a gym in Nigeria, but I don't want to like, I don't, right now, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to just throw money at it. I could, and I will at some point, but I don't want to just throw money at it, but I want to actually go or come back to Nigeria and like spend a few months just honing the skills there, honing the talent, just like, like scouting, if you will, seeing the people that mm -hmm. I feel like, yo, these guys can really do something. And then, yeah, I really want to also put the right people in place, the right people in place to run the facility that I'm going to have there. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Look, all the best this weekend. Um, you know, bring it home. Hey, shit. Waiting for you. you know, I'm not meant to be biased, but I mean, I can't, <laughs> I can't deny the fact that. Of course, be biased, Joe. Be biased. You know the vibes. You know the vibes. Yeah. So let's get it. Let's get that belt this weekend. Let's make history. Let's do what we have to do. And it would be nice to see you going in and out these these weight, um, 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 different stages of weight. Like you could come back down, you know, keep oh, yeah. defending that title. But once in a while, you go up there yeah. and show those guys what's up as well. If I chill out, I'll go middleweight. If I eat a bar, I'll go up to light heavyweight. If I find a yam heavyweight, you know, whatever, whatever. Are you, are you munching this weekend? Huh? Are you proper munching this weekend? Like, you know, have you been munching? I've been munching now. I mean, like, normally, I, yeah, I, I can, I, I've been eating a little bit, like, but still clean, relatively clean. I don't want to do anything too crazy. I'm not going to, like, just start to chop anyhow that yeah. my body's not used to in five week. But I just, small, small. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> all right man let's uh let's wrap this up thank you so much for, uh for this uh for taking time out i know it's crazy this weekend um all the best again and yeah man let's get it amen this year